So in the last video, we showed off a simple Hello World program. And then you know, we did this thing called compilation, and we got an executable out of it. But we didn't really explain what was going on you know, when we compiled something. So let's go ahead and run through the different steps of compilation and kind of see how it changes our program before it's actually ready to be run on the actual hardware. So we'll start with our same Hello World program that we saw last time. And instead of doing compilation in you know one big sweep where we get an executable immediately, uh, it can really be broken down into a couple different parts. The first of which is something called pre-processing. Now pre-processing is where we take this we take things like this include statement and like we said last time when you have an include statement we're basically saying you know take some file in this case io stream and put all of its contents right here now what preprocessing does is exactly that it looks up io stream and it places its contents right there uh, as well as doing some other things like expanding macros but we'll cover that more when we get to macros in later videos so let's go ahead and use G++ again. But instead of doing dash O, we'll do this dash big E. And that will, that will just do pre-processing on this file. And we'll call it on hello world.cpp. And then we'll do this right here. And all this says is, you know, it's going to print out a bunch of stuff uh, to the terminal. And we don't want to, you know, have to be scrolling a lot, so we'll just put it into a file so we can look at it at our own convenience. All right, there we go. We have this out.txt file now. So if we look at out.txt, we see we have a whole bunch of things that aren't our original C++ code, uh, and what it really, but we do see some things that look like C++ code in here. So we see another namespace standard. Uh, we see these namespace standards all over the place, as well as some inline uh, namespace and attributes. And what this really is, is the contents of iostream.h. Now, if we look at the very bottom of the file, we can see our file is significantly longer now. In fact, it's 28,000 lines. If we look at the very bottom, we see that here's our original. Let's go ahead and zoom back in. We see that at the very bottom, our original code still exists, but it's exactly where we left it, right? So everything above this using namespace standard, where we had our original uh, uh, include at, has been changed to be the contents of IO string. So that's pre processing. You know, it does a little bit of the work ahead of time as far as finding things like. Uh, our includes and putting them in. So for a simple program like Hello World, that's really all that it does. Now we'll go ahead and exit out. So that's step one of compilation, this pre-processing. The second thing that goes on is the creation of something called object code. Now object code, you can think of it, uh, you can think of it like assembly, but with some caveats. So we said that we're going to be using you know, libraries, and we mentioned the thing called a standard library. So whenever we run a program, the program generally has to link against these things called libraries that have predefined functions in it that really make everything run. But you know, before it goes through something called a linker, we don't know where those libraries exist actually in memory. So when we generate our assembly code, you know, we'll have a bunch of you know, kind of blank addresses or filler addresses there that will be filled in by the linker. So what we really get is kind of a shell assembly of, you know, what the actual program would be like. So we can generate this object code by using G++ again. So this, we're actually using the compiler portion of G++, not the preprocessor. And we'll use dash C this time. So we'll do dash C on hello world.cpp and we see we get this hello world.o. Uh, in order to actually look at the assembly, we can use this obj 
dump utility, which is object dump. So we're going to dump contents of an object file, and then we'll pass it this dash d parameter that says disassemble it. So you know, give me a readable form of the assembly language, right? And we'll call that on hello world .o. and it prints it out to the console. So let's go ahead and redirect it to. We'll call this object code dot text. So here we have. We see we no longer have our original C++ code, right? It's been transformed to something that looks, you know, maybe kind of strange or kind of odd if you've looked at other programming languages. And that's because, you know, this is the actual language that your computer runs in. Uh, it uses these uh, assembly instructions that can be translated directly into binary. And, but we do see some things in here that uh, are so, you know, it, it looks kind of odd, but we definitely see that there is some kind of structure here. You know, we see where it's pointing to, you know, where is, you know, this main function actually located at. But like we said, you know, we're missing some stuff in here. Well, you know, it may not be apparent from someone just looking at it, it hasn't gone through a linker yet. So our final step will be taking this object code and then linking it. And we can do that exactly how we, uh, uh, we did previously uh, in the last video by doing, let's go ahead and zoom back in. So we'll just take the object code. Uh, we don't need to go all the way back to the C++ source. And we'll take, uh, we'll do G++ dash O on hello world dot O, or sorry, we'll just put out something called hello world. And our input will be this object file. Or this object code and there we have our uh, executable now as I said the linker will change some stuff about our you know our object code so let's look at what that looks like so we can still run object dump on this and get the assembly we'll do dash D on hello world this time the actual executable not the object code and we'll dump it to another file say object code2.txt now we can go ahead and look at it and it's a little hard to compare so but we can see that you know right away we see that it's a lot longer and it looks pretty different from the other file and we can specifically compare differences using I'll use a utility called vindiff and so I'll take object code.txt and I'll compare it with object code2.txt. And here we have the two files, you know, side by side. And as we can see, you know, there's a lot of differences in here. So, uh, you know, a lot of things changed between, you know, just creating the object code and then after the linking process happens. So those are going to be the uh, the main. Oops, let's go ahead and get out of spot. So you know those steps are really you know the heart and soul of compilation. So we start out with our C++ code. We do some basic pre-processing on it, where we strip out some things like comments that don't actually affect the program. Uh, we then, you know, where we have include statements, we go ahead and grab those files and we mash them in wherever we have those include statements. And we take that pre-processed file then, we give it to the compiler and we say, generate me some, you know, assembly language, you know, the best you can, because it doesn't know the memory locations of, you know, the libraries yet, you know, it will, it'll have some, we'll say that it's assembly with caveats and then we give that assembly with caveats to the linker and then the linker fills in those gaps and we're left with our executable that we can actually run. As always all of these code samples can be found at the github page under the C++ crash course repo. So all of these first videos will be under fundamental concepts and here it is here's our original 
C++ Hello World. All right, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and thank you for watching.